Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Ollie from Flight Comp, and I'm back with another video. Uh, I have another model on the bench that I've been uh, building or working on. And this one is really exciting to me. It's a really um, nice looking model uh, made by Aerotech. It's called the Ikura, as you can see there. It's basically a sport model. Um, it's not, you know, like a typical F5J model or something like that that I usually work on. But it's a sport model and it can be a um, pure sailplane or you can cut the nose off and put a motor on it. It's pretty big. It's a little over 4 meters, 4.06 meters in span. And basically what it is, it's like a sport sort of F3B kind of airplane. It's got a uh, F3B airfoil. Um, the wings are stout, stiff, carbon, constructed like, uh, you know, maybe some F3B wings would be built. And it's got a really good looking, um, semi-scale sort of fuselage. And it has a T-tail. I really like the way, uh, T-tails look. So this airplane was, uh, or this sailplane was really appealing to me. And I've been working on it slowly for the past few weeks. And I'll just uh, kind of go over what I've done to it. I'm not, it's, this isn't going to be a real in-depth um, build video. But basically, it's a typical construction um, that you'd get with most modern sailplanes. You have to install your own servos, um, some of the linkage in the wing. And, uh, you know, if, if you're familiar with building an F3B or F3J or F5J model, this will be no problem for you. It's very straightforward. It's got some unique features, uh, such as the um, servo for the uh, T-tail actually mounts in the stab. And that was a little tricky, but it wasn't a huge deal. Um, the wings... Very standard, it's got two servos for the ailerons and flaps. Um, doesn't come with any sort of control horns or linkage for the uh, ailerons and flaps. You have to basically make your own. And what I've done is um, put in my own sort of LDS system here. These horns and the, that brass piece you see there are just parts that I designed and had made and uh, I uh, I designed them for some other airplanes but uh, you could use um, the servo ramen LDS system or you could just glue in a uh, you know maybe a fiberglass uh, or carbon fiber control horn and have your rods just going in um, so that is one of the more tricky parts of this build is is doing the linkages for the ailerons and flaps because you're basically left to your own devices on how to get that done but again if you've built uh, other molded sailplanes um, you probably know how to how to get that done anyway so it's, it's not a huge deal okay so the quality of this airplane is fantastic this is uh, made by Aerotech I really like Aerotech models uh, I flew some Satori's back in the day the quality of those models is pretty good but the uh, Stefan at Aerotech kind of has his own unique design that he likes uh, to do as far as shapes, noses, canopies, wingtips, things like that. And I really think he just designs uh, really beautiful looking models. And the Ikura is no exception. So what do you get with the model? Um, you basically just get the model. There's not a whole lot of accessories that come with it. You get the, the airframe components, the joiner, um, some nuts and bolts for, you know, like installing the... Um, tail on the, the vertical fin. Uh, there's a little bit of work you have to do um, compared to other models. For example, all the little pins uh, in the, the wings and the alignment pins in the wing roots. The, none of those are installed. You have to install those yourself. It's not a big deal at all. It's pretty easy to do. Um, I did scuff up the pins before I glued them into the parts just to try to get a better bond. So you have to put those in. I had to do a little bit of work on these holes in the fuselages. The wings were a very, very tight fit. I could barely just get them on. 
And I noticed that they fit okay up until the pins got to the, these alignment holes. And once the pins started going into the holes, everything got really tight. So I just I just took some uh, 220 grit sandpaper and rolled it up and just spun it around in here and that that sorted that out. I have pictures of that. I'll I'll, I'll put a bunch of pictures in, along in this video so you can see some of the stuff I did. So that definitely helped the wing uh, fit better, and I had some slight alignment issues where there was just a, like a maybe a millimeter gap at the trailing edge here, and then a millimeter gap at the leading edge here, which was telling me that the joiner wasn't sitting um, perfectly uh, square in the fuse. So all I did to fix that was I just took a um, flat piece of uh, metal and wrapped some sandpaper around it, and just again using 220. I just lightly sanded all the flat areas, not on the joiner, but in the fuse here. There's kind of a ledge or an edge all the way around where this joiner goes in. And I just sanded around there on the inside of the fuse and just kind of relieved it a little bit and got just a tiny bit of slop or play on both sides of the, of the fuse where the joiner goes in. And that took care of the alignment issue right away. That, along with um, sanding these uh, holes a little bit, made the wings go on super easy, super smooth. So that was uh, a little bit of work, but nothing major. You do have to glue in these um, multiplex pl plugs. They do provide the multiplex plugs. Um, there's no actual wire harness. They do give you these connectors, so you have to just solder on your own wires and um, you know make, make up your own harness. And same goes with the uh, with the wing. Uh, there's a nice molded in recess here for the multiplex plug. Glue, glues right in, and you have to do all your wiring in the wing that attaches to that plug. Here's the fin right here. Uh, this is neat. It has a recess for another multiplex plug, which is provided. And in this case, um, there is pre-routed servo wire in the fuselage so when you get the model there's but there's just some wire hanging out here so it makes uh, soldering up and putting this plug in really easy and then this little guy right here is just a G10 fiberglass shim it's about a millimeter thick and I've glued it on and uh, it I guess they had a uh, incidence problem in the design of this model so it just uh, gives it a, you know, a little bit more positive incidence, and I guess that sorts out the uh, maybe any incidence problems they had when they designed the model. When you put the elevator on, it actually goes into this notch. So when you put the elevator on, this disappears. You don't see this. So it doesn't affect the looks of the airplane or anything like that. Uh, but it's nice that they, you know, maybe they found an issue and they, they um, addressed it. Uh, it's got a somewhat small rudder, but uh, on a sport model like this, it doesn't really matter, you know. Um, it's got an internal horn, which is pre-done. So this horn and the clevis here is already done from the factory. And it's got a carbon fiber push rod that's already installed. Now the equipment I use so far in this Ikura are uh, all KST servos. I have a, a KST X10 Mini in the uh, stab here, the elevator. This is a um, G10 control horn that I just had lying around. Again, they don't provide you with any kind of control horn for the elevator, so you have to basically make up your own. Um, this is a MP Jet metal ball link and a 2.5 millimeter screw and nut holding that on. Two millimeter clevis or a two and a half millimeter clevis, yeah, two and a half, and just a bit of a two and a half uh, threaded coupler in there. Um, as you can see, the horn I made the horn very tall, and the control horn on the servo is somewhat short. I made this uh, horn very tall because I wanted to use as much of the servo travel as possible. I didn't want to have a uh, real long arm sticking out of here. I wanted to have a short arm on the servo and a long arm on the uh, actual control surface. So I use as much of the servo stroke as possible to get as much power and precision out of the servo. 
And again, uh, the other part of the uh, multiplex plug, um, there's a recess for this plug, so there's no guesswork uh, as far as installing these plugs. And I just started on a bit of wire. Um, this actually has a female servo connector on it. And I plug in the male from the servo so I can get the servo out if I need to. Okay, so putting in this X10 Mini was a bit of a pain because um, this elevator is very narrow. And even with a thin wing servo like this X10, it was going to stick up and get into the um, servo cover. So what I did is I actually cut off the front uh, mounting tab of the X10. So it only has two mounting tabs. It has one here and one here. It's in a wood tray, a, a wood servo frame. But I cut off the front portion of the servo frame. So it only has basically a sort of like an L servo frame like this with two screws holding it in. Um, this way I can jam the servo all the way up against the spar in here and get the servo as far back as possible and try to get into the thicker portion of the airfoil. And I barely managed to get the servo in there um, and a cover on without the servo hitting the cover. I did make a new cover. This is just a piece of real thin plastic. The standard cover they provided was like a two and a half, three millimeter thick fiberglass cover and it was just it stuck up way past the surface of the uh, tail. I didn't want to use it. This is a clear piece of plastic I cut, painted it white from the inside, stuck it on with some double-sided tape. Really easy. So the front of the servo is jammed up against the spar here, and the front edge of the servo goes under the um, wing skin. And I waxed up the servo really well with mold release wax. When I glued the servo, the I screwed the frame onto it. I put a bunch of epoxy with the thickening agent in here. Pushed the servo in, and the the uh, epoxy sort of built up around the front of the servo, so it uh, sealed up to the servo really nicely. And again, the front of the servo is under this skin, so it's not going to come out at all. So it's perfectly safe to use just the two mounting points that I have here. And if I want to remove the servo, take the cover off, unscrew the two screws, pop the servo up, and I could probably rock it out and slide it back, get it out, uh, no problem. And I didn't have to um, grind on the case of the servo or use a raised cover or anything like that to get the cover over it. So a little bit of work there. Um, you really, I saw some guys using smaller servos. Um, to try to get avoid this work with making the servo fit, but I, I know I really wanted to use a very strong, precise servo, and um, so it was a little bit of extra work to get it in, but I got it in, and it works great, so um, if you're thinking about building one of these, definitely put a strong servo in there. Okay, servos for the wing. I have, uh, again, all KST X10s. X10 Mini on the ailerons, X, regular X10s on the flaps. They're both in third bearing frames. The controls on the surface side are LDS, and they go to a standard clevis um, on the servo end, so it's sort of an LDS hybrid. The servo arms, I made them as short as possible uh, because when you have an LDS setup, you have a really short, basically, control horn. And if you have a longer servo arm, you're going to move your servo a few degrees and the this surface is going to move a lot. And you're going to lose a ton of power and precision from your servo. You're going to get double centering. Just not a good situation. So you want to make your arms as short as you possibly can, which means you have to grind the clevises, grind out reliefs and things so they clear the output shaft. If you're going to go like a setup like I did, make sure your servo arms are as short as possible or... Use a servo ramen or other LDS uh, setup, maybe MP Jet Hubs or something like that. Get the arms as short as possible on your wing servos. Just a quick note on the uh, KST X10 servos. I think by far they're the best servo I've ever used. Um, they're as precise as any other servo, uh, sailplane servo on the market. 
They have tons of torque, tons of uh, speed, high voltage. They're very inexpensive, between $43 and $45. The gears are hardened steel, coated hardened steel. They have no slop. There's no slop in these servos. And I've used them in other models, and over time, they don't develop a lot of slop. Just by far, hands down, the best sort of wing servo I've ever used. I highly, highly recommend them. You don't have to spend $80, $80 or $100 on these wing servos from other brands. Try the X10 Minis. Guaranteed, you'll love them. Uh, in the Fuse, I'm going to use another uh, KST servo. I think it's an X12 508. Basically just a mini, not a micro, standard vertical mount servo. Again, very precise, very powerful, very fast. So that's basically uh, uh, you know what I've got done so far. I am going to cut the nose off and put a motor in this. I'm still looking at motor options and choices. One thing I do want to say about this model is it's extremely stiff. It's a very strong model. The boom is very strong. The wings are incredibly stiff. But up here... When you get to this big sort of bulbous nose, even though it's got a lot of layers and, you know, Kevlar and carbon and all that, it's still flexy, right? You can see it's still flexy. It's pretty bendy. So what I want to do is I want to stiffen this up as much as possible, which means I'm going to put a huge servo, uh, servo tray or platform in this. And basically it's going to start from here. And go all the way to here. I won't be able to get it in one shot. It'll be like two pieces. I'll put the back end, put the front end in, and then glue it, you know, glue it together, glue it to the fuselage. And that's gonna really stiffen all this up and make the front of this model much stronger. And you know, it, it'll help with the hard landing. And I think just from I'm gonna put a big powerful powerful motor in this and run a lot of voltage through it. And I think just the torque from the motor and everything will just stiffen all this up really nicely. And I'm going to do something really neat. This is going to be sort of a hybrid servo tray. It's going to be basically a machined plywood. My buddy just um, machined the parts for me. So i got to go over there and get them. And then it's going to have a big sort of cutout in the center with a bunch of uh, bolts. And in the center, I'm going to 3D print like a platform. And that's going to have the uh, servo cutout. And it'll probably have pockets for the ESC and the receiver and uh, routing the antennas and uh, areas where I can um, use some Velcro straps to get the, the, power, the, the battery pack in here for the motor. So that's going to be a really neat part of this project. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at now. Basically, the wings are done. The uh, elevator hookup is done. The wiring is in place. I gotta get this tray in, figure out a motor, and get the rudder servo in. I'll show you the rudder uh, push rod. You know, it's um, it's already in there for you. Very basic um, carbon, pretty stout. You will have to go back here as far as you can and bond bond it to the side of the fuse. Um, probably go in through the uh, joiner opening and get it back here too. Um, but yeah, so the rudder servo is going to go somewhere on this side. And then I'm basically just going to have a big open platform to mount all the other components and try to make this install as neat as possible. So that's where I'm at now. So this is the Aerotech Ikura. Again, it's just a really gorgeous looking uh, sport model. Quality is, is great. Um, I'll, I'll put the canopy on real quick. And show you guys how that looks. This sort of canopy shape is like a Aerotech trademark. All their models have the shape, and I love it. I think it looks great. Um, oh, really quick, I'll show you how the um, the wings work. You know, this center part of the wing is very standard. Um, you'll figure that out if you've built uh, F3J or F3B. And then it's got a, a very small tip section with another joiner. And what you have to do is it comes pre-drilled with an alignment pin and then another hole here um, to hook up the moving part of this tip to the aileron so that when the aileron moves, the tip moves. And I'll show you how that looks. 
You have to glue those pins in yourself, but there's no guesswork there. You just, you know, scuff them and glue them in and they line up perfectly. So don't worry about that. So that both the pins are in and then push it in. There we go. Really nice tight fit here. So now when we move the aileron, this trileron or tip aileron follows the aileron. And everything is really tight and secure, so it's a very nice setup. Um, and look at that wing, man. That thing is just gorgeous. So get that all in there. Again, just over four meters. Stiff. Sort of a heavy model. This model is supposed to weigh 2,800 grams flying. I don't know if that's just a pure sailplane version. I have a feeling... I'm going to be well into the 3,000 gram mark with the motor and flight pack and all that. And that's fine by me because this thing, I just want to tear up the sky with this thing. I don't want to, I'm not worried about catching low thermals and all this kind of stuff. I, I want to haul ass with this thing, tear up the sky, fly it like an F3B plane, maybe take it to the slope and just have fun with it. For me, this is just going to be a fun sport model. I've, I've been dying to um, build one of these. And we're almost done, actually. It wasn't a ton of work, you know? It wasn't It wasn't too bad. So, again, Aerotech Ikura, gorgeous T-tail, 4-meter sport model, stiff, gorgeous, almost done, almost ready to fly. I gotta do a servo tray, put a motor in, and then uh, I'll do another video when I get this tray sorted and I get a motor sorted. And then hopefully we'll have, basically this will be a three-video series, this first video... And then um, the second video with the, the power plant layout and the servo tray. And then we'll go fly it and make the final video. And I'll let you guys uh, know what I think about it. This model is about uh, $2,500, which is, yes, super expensive. But for what you get, you know, if you compare it to an F3J or F5J, they're about $2,000. you are getting, uh, you know, a lot more model, you know, for your money. It's expensive, yes, not everyone can afford it, but if you have the budget and you want something sexy and fast, super high quality construction, check this plane out, the Aerotech Ikura. I'll leave some links in the description below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.